Good afternoon, five minutes with Pastor Dave. It's been an awesome day today. A little warm, I think it's 91 degrees right now here, and uh, we've enjoyed this cool weather. Uh, I've been thinking about a lot of things lately when it pertains to God, and uh, when you get to be our age, you know, it, you realize that it uh, could be any day that you get to meet with the Lord. You never know. Life is so fragile. We never know how long we will live. But uh, in Amos 4.12, it says, prepare to meet thy God. And I think of that in the positive sense as a believer. My heart rejoices when I think of the songs that we sing when we all get to heaven. What a wonderful day that'll be. Or when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Or the song, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. Or we could, that song, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. You know, to a believer, to meet in God is great, but to those that are not believers, um, it may not be so wonderful. And when we think of that we're all going to die, I'm going to die, and you're going to die, and my eyes will close tight, and um, if the Lord tarries, and... Um, and I will say my last breath, and, and before my heels get cold, I'll be in the presence of God. But uh, <clears throat> I was looking at the death rate in America, and uh, you, you say, well, I, you know, I'm going to live forever. But in the U.S., on the uh, worldpopulationreview.com, it says this, in the U.S., 8,152 people die per day in 2023. 8,152 that's 57,064 die per week. Then I went on down and did research that it said that in the world, in, the world, uh, in 2024, the death rate is 170,791 people will die today worldwide. Or that is uh, 7,116 people. Our death per minute is 119 people. So we realize that uh, death is certain and our meeting God is sure that we are going to stand before him one day. To the believer, it's exciting, but to the unbeliever, it's not. And when he says, prepare to meet thy God, you know, I think of all this numbers of the people that passed away. I wonder sometimes how many of them have prepared for themselves. You know, people go to church and they never make that decision. Listen, folks, just because you go stand in a garage doesn't mean that you're a car. There is, to serving Jesus is a repentance and you come to him and forgiveness of your sin. You can't just say, well, I, I'm, I'm good and all this. No, it has to be that you've received Jesus as Lord. You must, the Bible says you must be born again to receive eternal life. And then the, your spirit has to come alive again. And Jesus died on the cross for you and me that we can have eternal life. But if you and I refuse to accept that and make that a part of our life, our meeting with God will not be as awesome or as wonderful as we hoped it would be. You and I will be there. We'll be there alone. We won't have anybody to stand up and we can't blame anybody because there's enough word out. There's enough in America, especially that there's no excuses that we can give. The Bible says you are without excuse. So I ask you today, are you prepared to meet God if you were to go today? Could be. Uh, I was reading in the, the paper where, or on the news clip that in Chicago during the, the Democratic Convention, 10 people were killed throughout the city by gunfire and several injured. In, in St. Louis, here close to us, there's people that's dying every day, one of the uh, crime cities and uh, you know around the world you never know you never know in an accident we've had in our fire department we've had several calls to this past week and and you don't know you don't know i don't know i don't know you know by the time i get up to uh, my house there i uh, may not be here so prepare to meet thy god how do you prepare is you ask him to be lord you say, Lord, I want you to forgive me of my sins. I thought you had to bawl and squall and everything else, but when I realized that 2,000 years ago, Jesus forgave you of every sin you ever committed, 
and all your righteousness is filthy rags. The only thing you can do is accept what Jesus done for you on the cross. And if you'll do that, and Lord Jesus, I accept what you've done for me. I acknowledge you that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and I want to live for you. I want to be what you have me to be. Then you can have eternal life. Very simple. Jesus paid it all, beat, whip, went to the cross. But you and I are going to stand before him one day and we're going to give an account. Some people put it off, just put it off. Well, I'm going to wait till I get out of school, I'm going to wait till I get older, I'm going to wait here and go to wait there. You know, you can wait too long. A farmer can wait too long to get his crop and he loses it all. A person that has a health issue waits too long to go to the doctor and get it taken care of and it could be devastating for him. So I challenge you, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Are you right with God today? Does he, is he really Lord of your life? I challenge you, if he's not, make him Lord of your life. Even as I'm talking, just open your heart and say, Lord, I receive what you've done for me on Calvary's cross. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I acknowledge you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Come, enjoy eternal life with us. Look forward to that time when he splits the eastern sky. Look forward to that time when we meet him face to face and, and he'll say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. That's you and I. we got the best is yet to come. This is only the dressing room for the great event. One of these days we're going to meet him. And Amos 4.12 says, prepare to meet thy God. You do that this week. Share the good news of the gospel with somebody else. You have a super good week. Lord bless you.